Hello, Lizzie here. Today I'm going to show you how to make Augustina, which is our beautiful, beautiful beach bag. Well, I, I've made it as a beach bag, but obviously you could make it as a big shopper bag because it is really quite big. Um, and there's the pattern. That's what it will look like when you see it on the website. So if you go to lizziecurtis.com and look for Augustina, you will find this beautiful pattern. Um, there's only one pattern piece to it, and actually it's a template. So it's, that's as simple as it gets. So this is uh, this is she and uh, she has a couple of features so she has like the the ring here the rings both sides to put your straps in and I've just knotted it but actually I've stitched it in with the top stitching at the top of the bag to make it really secure so it's really decorative it's not really functional then we've got poppers at either end magnetic closures to actually make the big the bag bigger or smaller as you wish and also we've got massive pockets either side so if I can open these up again magnetic closures these are really really big pockets and of course you can just clip those together and the same the other side so you can see it's a really big roomy bag um, it's got a big gusset there going all the way around so it's quite sort of like I say roomy um, gosh what can you use it for well in my head it was all about going to the beach having a summer picnic because obviously um, Augustina matches Augie which is actually sitting behind me here and uh, you may have already seen that pattern if not go check it out so I made it with the same fabric so it, it would actually match uh, so it's fully lined it has a softer soft to medium stabilizer in it and some wadding so it's quite comfortable when it's against your skin and when you carry it and of course the straps are really I think just right just right a length to actually just pop onto your shoulder and off you go to the shops or to the beach so this is Augustina and I'm going to show you now how to make her so in this way of making the bag up I'm doing it slightly different to the pattern so the pattern's going to show you one slight difference and I'm but I'm going to show it to you in a slightly different way it actually is just a shortcut and I thought of as I had written the pattern I thought do you know what there's a shortcut to this and so follow me through this like I say the pictures in the pattern the description of the pattern is just slightly different not much at all so I'm going to put my template to one side I'll pop it over here until I need it now you'll have two pieces for your pocket now this bag is the reverse of the bag behind me so the fabrics that you see on the outer of this bag behind me is the opposite to what I'm doing here so you might think well that doesn't match it actually does but it's just reverse of the of the fabrics so you've got two pieces to your pocket all the measurements are in the pattern so you don't there's no guesswork so I'm now going to join my two pieces together so that's the right side in actual fact this is the lining this time and this is the outer piece so we're going to go right sides together and now in this pattern all the seam allowances are actually half an inch which is really quite different to what I normally do but as this is quite a big bag I wanted the seams to be really strong so just bringing in my machine here now you might well have a half inch marker on your machine if not you can always pop a bit of tape there or something to make it a little bit easier for you with your seam allowances so just do this uh, seam now with a half an inch seam allowance all the way along to the other end there we go you might want to put pins in this or use your quilting clips to hold your pieces together there we go and what I need to do now is just pop my iron on because this is where we need to get this quite accurate because it leads us on to the next stage of making the bag so just bring my mat up you could iron this seam open or you can put it to one side I don't think it matters too much I'm just going to sort of push that seam over to the front of the bag just take a little time to do that so it's lovely and neat okay so there are the two pieces joined together and actually fact the pocket's going to be like that so take your pocket piece and fold it absolutely in half so get those long raw edges matching up and I want you to press this really well I'm not bothered about this part of the bag but this is the part I want a really good press 
So take your time because we're going to use that press line, that fold line as a measurement for not only our next stage, but also when we put our magnetic closures in. So again, make sure your edges are meeting, they haven't slipped. That way you'll keep the accuracy and make sure that that fold line is perfect. So that's really crispy. Actually, that's the inside. <laughs> that's the outside. So at this moment, I've put no stabilizer on and no wadding, okay? I've just literally stitched my seam together, folded it in half and pressed well. Okay, so the next stage is to put your stabilizer and wadding in. Now the stabilizer needs to go on the inside of your pocket, okay? So that's the inside. So I always use iron-on. You may prefer something different, but iron-on always works for me. Now I'm putting my stabiliser right up to that crease line, that's my halfway point. And don't worry because this is, I haven't cut this very well, but I'm mainly interested in that fold line there. So just give it time for that glue to adhere to your fabric. If it doesn't adhere, by the time you finish this, it will be. <laughs> because you'll have pressed it a couple of times. Again, make sure your stabilizer goes right up to that fold line. If it's a millimeter difference, eighth of an inch difference, don't worry too much. Gosh, this iron gets hot. I say that every time, and every time I have it on too hot. So just give that iron time to heat through the layers. And in an ideal world, you'll put this to one side just for a minute or two for that heat to take, come out of the fabric, for the fabric to cool down. Uh, while it's still warm, it has this danger of actually um, coming away. So just give it a moment to settle. And then we've got our wadding. So we need to put our wadding on now. <clears throat> so any uh, repositional temporary spray will do use a permanent if you want to. Now all I'm going to do is spray the wadding. I never spray my fabric just in case that glue comes through and spoils my fabric and I have known that to happen and it's it's just not fun because you have to recut. So again the wadding needs to go up to the fold line. There we go. And just ease that down, push it out there we go. So those two pieces are now pretty much butted up to each other. You can just about see it. There's a gap, a little gap in between. I'm okay with that. So now what I want you to do is fold that over again and make sure that sits nicely. And I'm really happy with that. That's sitting beautifully now. Okay, so the next stage is to mark where your uh, magnetic closures are going to go. Now the magnetic closures always go on the inside of whatever you're making um, and then on the bag it's going to be on the outside so if your pocket is going to be on the inside. So if the piece that you have stabilized is where we put our popper, okay, our magnetic closure. Wait, it could be a popper. So as I said before, in the pattern it gives you the exact measurements of what you need to do now. So it's six inches from the edge and one inch in. So draw yourself a, a marker dot. Again, six inches from the edge, one inch down. And one inch down is from that crease line. If you remember, I said to you that would end up being quite important. And then you need to put your magnetic closure in. So I've got my closures down here, all in a heap, because they tend to stick together. Now I use a little rubber mat because I use a hole punch. So this is, this is called a fabric punch or a hole punch um, and they're readily available online. I get a lot of questions about those, especially the one I use, but this is no longer available. So I put my little mat underneath. It's like a, a silicon mat just to protect my cutting mat. Now where, that, where we've made that dot, you want to place the center of your the back, the centre of your back flat on there to mark where you're going to do your holes. So split those up. Now you can decide whether you put the thicker side of your 
magnetic closure on the lining or on your bag. In this instance, I've put the, the thinner side of the magnetic closure on my pocket, but you can do it the other way around. I'm not sure there's a rule on that sort of thing, especially with something like this. So I've popped the backing down. I'm now marking where the punch marks will go, the hole marks, and just make sure that you've got your, and you'll get this on any magnetic closure you, you purchase. You'll get that identification, if you like, right in the center. I know you won't be able to see that, but it works a treat. So I'm just gonna move all the bits I don't want out of the way. Like I said, they're very, uh, very magnetic. <laughs> so I've made my two little marks. I've got my hole punch and I'm just going through two nice big holes moving my mat along and again just guiding that hole punch there we go so now I've got my two holes there as well which is absolutely perfect now don't forget you want your uh, magnetic closures to be on this side of your fabric so if you take the piece that you've decided to use whether it's the thicker side or the thinner side then pop it through your holes if you can find them this is such a gorgeous, pretty fabric. So I've pushed those through. I might as well do the other ones. Let's get the mat out of the way. There we go, find the holes. Push the legs through. There we go, flip that over. Make sure they're sitting nicely. And then put the backs on over the top of the legs. And the other one. Now sometimes I can push these flat, sometimes I can't. So I'm going to use my scissors today. Now you could also put your legs out so they go out or you could push them so they go in. Um, gosh, again, not many rules about these sort of things. But if you don't want to feel this part on your bag, then you'd perhaps want to push them in. So it's up to you. See which one, you find out what's best for you. There we go. So that's what I've done now. So there we are. So there's my poppers in place. And if we look at the, the right side again, and if I hang, hang this, hold it up, you may just about see them flashing. There we go. All good to go. So now we've made our front of our pocket. We actually want to top stitch this. So it's really neat. So I'm bringing in the machine again. And this time I'm going to do the width of my foot, which happens to be a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to top stitch all the way down and just make this a really neat finish. Increase your stitch length to three. And if you want to use a walking foot, please do. Now, when you come to the magnetic closure, you might find it sticks to your the, the plate on your machine. So if your machine suddenly goes a bit funny, it might be because the magnetic closure is caught there. So be aware of that. And like I say, a walking foot is fat because we're going through quite a few layers it shouldn't pucker but just in case it does it's worth getting that walking foot out so again the other side so we're just going on the it's like a sort of a welt isn't it just a decorative part of the pocket now what I'd like you to do once you've done this part is to give this pocket a really good press Probably easier now than when you actually attach it to the bag. So there we go. I haven't bothered back stitching because it's going into a seam. So there is our bag front. You can just about see the top stitching on there. Now if I turn it to the lining, which is rather grand, you can see the poppers there. So we've top stitched it. It's ready now to put onto our bag. Now, before we put this onto the bag, we need to put the poppers on the bag piece itself. So if I bring that in. Now, just so you know, already I've put the stabilizer on here. You might, you might be able to see this. I've put the stabilizer on the back of my main pocket piece. Uh, sorry, my main bag piece. And I've put the wadding on there as well. That's now good to go. Perhaps we need to glue that down again, but I'm happy with that. Um, I haven't cut it to shape and that's one of the reasons I said to you right at the beginning we're doing this slightly different to the pattern because I'm cutting everything once the pocket is attached. So 
Two ways of doing this. There are in the instructions the exact measurements of uh, where to put the poppers, the, the magnetic closures, whatever you decide to use. And I do the measurement from the top of the bag. So let's uh, move that around so it makes more sense to you. So the measurements I give are from the top of the bag down to the to the snap fastener and the same with the other side but because I'm doing it slightly different I'm going to do it in a slightly different way so make sure that all your raw edges are together okay now what you might want to do is to get your quilting clips and just hold those in place okay um, just because it makes it really nice and neat and we're going to go on to a cutting stage shortly so just make sure that we're we're all happy with that I didn't think I'd call that wadding there we go so that's sitting perfectly straight um, and now what you could do is do that measurement like I said and it, it's a definite measurement in the pattern of from the top of the bag down to where your snap fastener is but the other way you can do this is feel where your magnetic closure is it's just here and just fold that fabric back and you could just give yourself a little marker here and then come up to the other end fold that back where the snap fastener is and just put a little mark there fold that back right so the other thing you can do is just bring in your ruler and it's exactly where I thought it should be so that's a good idea to do it that way or the other way it's up to you so now we're going to put the other side of the magnetic closure on so let's find the pieces we need. Again, they're all stuck together. You'll never lose anything because you'll have a, just a big heap of, of bits where they're all stuck together. So those are the two, the fat sides. So again, put your mat underneath, get one of the bags. Don't guess this bit. Please use the uh, measurement guide that you get. Otherwise you might find it puckers. And let's find it this end. Again, just pop a, whoops, pop a little mark of where you need to pop your hole punch through. So make sure your mat's there. You don't want to damage your self-healing mat or whatever you've got underneath. Your best table. Oh gosh, I can't, can't bear the thought of it. And again, just pop your holes in. Such a great tool. If you can find one, um, well done, because uh, some people haven't been able to find them, but I know they're there somewhere on the internet. So pop the legs through, and of course, don't forget this time, the popper needs to be, or magnetic closure needs to be on the right side of your fabric. Whereas before we did it on the lining, didn't we? So pop your legs through, flip this over. They shouldn't drop out. <laughs> There we go. Just push that fabric down so it's sitting nice and square. Again, put the legs on the back. Now this is exactly the same process when we come to do the sides of the bag. Um, if you remember right at the beginning, you'll, you'll notice that the gusset has a popper at, right at the top so you can make your bag a little bit smaller at the ends. It stops it from gaping, from falling out too much, but still gives you that massive, massive amount of space for all your shopping. So there we are. So there's our legs flattened out. Like I said, I like to use the back of my scissors. Sometimes I can use my thumb, sometimes I can't. So look, they're going to just marry up together absolutely perfectly. There we go. And you can see my clips haven't moved because they're exactly in the right place. Now this is where the pattern is slightly different from what I'm going to do now. Okay, so you can choose which way you go. And through the pattern, I actually say to you, you decide now what to do. You can do it this way or have a look at the video. So this is the video. So I'm using a temporary spray on the back of my, my pattern piece. It's more a template really, because we're going to draw around it. Um, and all we're going to do is place this onto our corner. Now you might find that your pocket is slightly doesn't fit, because you know what, we've hand cut this, so it's not going to be 100% perfect, unless you're a brilliant cutter outerer. So what you need to do is just to make sure that those bot that bottom edge meets the raw edge. I'm going to hold this up so you can see. 
The bottom edge matches the raw edges of your pocket and your main bag. And this straight edge here goes up the bag, up the side of the bag, and then just pop it down. I've, like I said, I've put glue on mine. I'm just going to move that slightly. There we go. I've stuck mine down. You could pin this if you want to. So if I hold that up, you can just see beautifully. And so I'm going to use my rotary cutter and go round it, OK? So I'm going to stand up for this so you'll get a good over overhead shot now. You need, to, you need to put a little bit of pressure on it. Again, I'm just going to move it because my pocket is slightly out, but I'm going to go by the main body of the bag rather than my pocket. Now this way ensures that all of your pattern pieces for the pocket, for the lining, for your bag is absolutely the same. There's no getting away from it that we've got a beautiful rounded edge there. And then what we need to do is the other side. Now we've got sticky on this side of the pattern. So now we need to put sticky on that side of the pattern because we're going to flip it. So again, I'm going to go by my bag rather than my pocket. So just lining that up. There we go. And if you wanted to, look, we've got a quilting clip there. You can always just clip it, but I'm going to bring my blade up to there. I'll just move that along. So you can see how quick and easy it is. But oops, don't forget, we're going through quite a few layers here. And this is why I thought it was probably a good idea to show this in the video uh, and a different way in the pattern. It's quite nice to have the choice, whatever suits you. And to be honest, you can do, use your big dressmaking scissors to actually cut through that. There we go, happy with that. So that's our bag curved. And obviously you'll have to do the same for the, the lining when we get to that part. So if I just get that clip back in and I'm going to clip it. When I say clip, I don't mean I'm going to cut it. I'm literally using my clips. So I'm just trimming that pocket back a wee bit. This is why when you have uh, pieces, a kit, for instance, that's already pre-cut for you, it's 100% um, accurate. You won't when you're hand cutting. So I've got my Ava down here to catch all my pieces. If you don't know what my Ava is, it's a little bag. You'll find that on the website as well. And it sits under my mat and all my spare pieces go in there. It's fantastic. OK, so that is our front of our bag done and so really well, the next thing to do is to actually put our gusset on um, from the back and the front now before we do that there's quite an interesting part of this bag that we need to do and that's to make some holes so be brave I've done the other side to save some time we're gonna make these holes okay it's best to do it now now then I've used what's called curtain grommets okay and curtain grommets are for for the top of the curtains where you put the pole through um, but they're also incredibly useful for things like bag making and you can get these in all of your upholstery stores hobby hobby stores and they come in two parts so when you get them let me just find the other ones i've got here hiding away when you get them, there should be a part that you can actually split open. So here, you're not going to be able to see this, but there's a little sort of gap perfect for my screwdriver. And you just pop your screwdriver in there and you think you're going to split it. Well, in effect, you are going to split it. Um, and some of them, I think some of them might unscrew as well. There's all different sorts. And if like that, it was a bit stiff, just, just give it time and they will wriggle apart. OK. So it's curtain grommets. If you, if you look for curtain rings, you'll find the wooden rings that you put onto curtains, which is not what you want. So the next thing to do now is to actually um, make the holes, as I said, for our uh, bag handles to, to, be, to go through and then tie off. As I say, it's purely decorative. So in the pattern, I've got it to hand here. I'm going to use this as a guide. You're just going to draw through the grommet 
and I'll use this as my guide for the moment. So you split it in half if you want to at this stage, you're gonna to have to at some point, and you're just going to draw inside that circle there, okay? I've already got my circles on the other half, so I'm just gonna use them as my guide. Now you might find that you'll have to cut slightly bigger. So do this inside measurement first. So go in there first, cut it, be brave, but you might want to cut it again, about um, a millimeter, not quite as much as an eighth of an inch, but just take a little slither off that circle. You want the grommet to sit really well over the top and to have a neat fit. So I'll just draw my circles here, and these should be perfect because I've already cut these down to size. So let's pop that away. And again, you might be a little anxious on how you're going to cut this. Um, you, like I say, you've got to be brave. So I just tend to fold my fabric in half and just do a little nick. And that way I've got a good starting point to pop my scissors in. So don't, don't try and stab in there. Just fold it cut it and then you've got a slit and and really this is this is a just a, one of those awkward times when you've got to work your way around a circle a whole bag has got to move um, there's no easy <laughs> easy way of doing this um, this is too bad too big to go through a die cutting machine if you've got dies and a, a cutter you just couldn't get the whole thing through so there's one done it's like an eek moment folded it, snipped it. Let's just cut around my mark. Now, because I've already cut mine to size, I don't need to trim again, but you may well. And I'm going to show you what that grommet looks like once it's installed into your hole. We're not doing the lining just yet, you'll notice. The lining comes last. Let's get this bag done first. And it's, like I say, it's one of those eek moments when you've just spent a lot of time on this and then you're cutting two holes. Two holes. So I use the grommet that has the raised half. So if you look at this one, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but that one is really flat. Just try and do it so you can see. I'll tip it. There we go, you can see it so it's flat. And if I tip this one, it's slightly raised, not much, but it is. I want you to put that underneath your hole, okay? And just get it so it's right in the center. And then push your fabric around the raised part. And it should be a nice snug fit. And if I was to lift that up carefully, my grommet is actually it's not stuck in there, but it's held in place because the circle, if I flash it, you'll be able to see where that grommet is. But we don't need to put it in just yet because we haven't done our lining, have we? Right, so the next stage is to put the gusset in. Okay, so we do one half and then we do the other. Now with the gusset, here it is, I've already stabilized and put my wadding on my gusset, okay? And it's, it's quite a wide, chunky gusset. Now this is cut in two pieces. And there's this, well, you won't be able to see, but the seam is, is here, okay? Um, if you, <clears throat> when you cut your wadding, your wadding is cut in two pieces as well. And that wadding is butted up to each other. If you want to, you could zigzag it together. But it's not really essential. As long as you're using the temporary glue, it's fine. So with that seam allowance here, we need to find the centre of our bag. And as always, all we're going to do, fold it in half and cut a little nick in it. And you're thereabouts on the centre, aren't you? So let's just line this up and just cut a little nick. And I'm really serious when I say a little nick. There it is, I haven't quite got that. Let's do that hasn't quite got the pocket, but we have got a lot of layers going on. Let's just cut that away. I think I'll see that okay. 
So um, now we're going to actually use all our quilting clips and when I say all <laughs> I almost mean that. You really want to clip this in place really well. Now you'll, you'll find that your gusset is too long for your bag. Please don't think that your gusset is absolutely perfect to your bag because depending on your seam allowances um, it depends on whether you pull your pieces and, and distort them slightly uh, and this is just human nature you might find that it, if I did it exactly right it would be too short too long whatever so I've deliberately made it too long so please don't think that it's going to fit 100% so you've got your seam here right in the center and you've got your center seam there so I'm just going to bring that towards me so I can see it myself and just bring all those layers together. Don't forget we're on a half an inch seam allowance here. I mean the centimetre would be fine if you're new money. So I'm using my existing clips just to hold this together and then I want you just to work around those curves there. So don't pull it, don't tug it, just help it along. It won't need clipping. Uh, this is quite a nice generous curve so just let the fabric work its own way around that curve but just take your time and clip all those together when I say clip I mean quilting clips right so I've clipped my gusset and my front of my bag back of my bag together they're the same I've actually changed my walking foot now because I often talk about it very rarely use it but this is such a good time to use it because we're going through multiple layers even though you've stuck all your stabilizer down and your wadding you've still got the two layers to put together and your pocket a lot going on so you can see that that is the gusset is quite a bit bigger than the bag and that's absolutely intentional like I said now if you wanted to you could start from the beginning and, and sorry the middle and go out to each end but as I've clipped it together should be fine shouldn't move especially as I'm move, using the walking foot so again it's a, about a half an inch seam allowance a centimeter and a nice back stitch to start so you've got a nice lock there I'll bring my clips over here and, and then just make your way around it's really very easy just take your time if you're at all worried or anxious take your time Make sure that your pocket is exactly where it needs to be. Should be, because we did put a clip there before. Follow the line, the curve of the bag. And it's a lovely curve, as I said. And I wouldn't have thought you'd need to clip into this at all. And I haven't with the original one. Um, I didn't think it was necessary. So follow it all the way around. Take your clips out as you go. So a quick mention about my gold club if you haven't joined already there's no time like the present just pop to my website find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my Facebook weekly events which is absolutely amazing my girls love it and of course you get the free patterns as well so if you want more information there is actually a video on YouTube that you can have a little look at And then if you need to adjust, just adjust, but all should be fine. And once you've done this a few times, if you make a bag like this a few times, you probably won't need to, to clip like this, um, but it is a good feature to actually do that. It's a good technique, um, good discipline, I suppose, to get into that habit. Just come around those curves. Now, if you wanted to, you could clip into the gusset, not the bag, um, because then if you clip into the bus gusset, you kind of make it curved because it will bend nicely. But because we've got a nice big seam allowance and it's a gentle curve, you shouldn't need to do that. Okay. So just come up to the top. Nice back stitch. 
cut your threads. So there we are, there's one half done. Now before we do the other half, we've got one more important step to do, which I nearly forgot to tell you about, and that's to put the poppers in. Now, so the original bag, let me get it. Ooh, there we go. Just so you remember that the poppers are just here. So we're going to put those poppers in now, just so they're done. But don't forget that as you machine the gusset in again on the other side, those poppers may, may not well stick to the bed of the machine because they're obviously they're magnetic. Um, so I'm just going to do that now. Right, so let's get those poppers in. Uh, before I do that, I'm actually going to trim my gusset because I know now that the other half of the bag will fit beautifully. So let's trim these pieces away. I'm just literally getting my ruler up, getting it all so it's level. You can see how beautifully level that all is. And just trimming that piece away. Only because the measurement I give you in the pattern for where the poppers are going to go, you need to have this piece cut away. So it's easier to do it now and just there we are take that away so what you need to do is measure in from the size again I give you the measurements for that so if you go if you just put that flat and bring your ruler in we're going to go one and a half two and a half so two and a half down one and a half in now obviously we've got a half inch seam allowance there so obviously you could do this before you um, put the gusset on the bag. That's entirely up to you. So I'm going to go two and a half and one. Because I've got, I'm using a black pen, I can hardly see where I'm going. Let me do that again. Yeah, I didn't think that was right. So two and a half and one and a half. That's it, that's better. I might have to do a bigger bigger line so I can see. Because it's dotty fabric, isn't it glorious? Except I can't see my dots. And just one inch from here, and that was that was there, so that's all fine. So it's exactly the same technique as we've done before. So if we get the mat in and we get the hole punch in, I'm gonna pop that underneath. And then get your pieces now what you want to do really is to get it so your thin sides are on the same piece so with this one my thin side will go here because this this bag doesn't really have a back or a front so I'm going to put the thin side here and then when I do the other half the thin side will go exactly the mirror image of that so again don't forget to use your pen and your the tools are provided for you because the backings have the marking slots on de deliberately as it happens um, and use that use that and like I say you could do this before you put the gusset in it's entirely up to you oh, gosh you know we all have different ways of doing things um, and as I develop patterns I tend to uh, change things as I go along and I can make the pattern a dozen times and it would still be different to the first time I made it and I think we're all like that, aren't we? So I put that backing on. I'm going to use the back of my scissors again. Just splay those legs out. So don't forget, the other half is the fat half. If you've got a heap of poppers like me, they've all been tangled together. And you're literally popping the legs through again. Let's just get that done. I'm seeing spots before my eyes now. <laughs> let's see oh I can see better from the back there we go so there's my back there's my backing pop it on there we go by the time you've made this bag how many poppers have we done two four six yeah two four six <laughs> pairs of poppers that's a lot Right, let's pop that out of the way. So there is our popper installed on the side. And of course it will fit absolutely perfectly. Let's do that. There we go, fits perfectly. But obviously you don't want to close that together yet. So what we're gonna do, or what I'm gonna do, I'm going to put the poppers on the other side of my gusset and I'm going to attach the other half of my bag 
onto the gusset as well and I'll come back to you when I've done that. So I've actually put the gusset on both sides of the bag and I put my poppers on as well uh, so they're ready to go together and make a lovely neat finish. We're nearly there. Um, it's one little thing I want you to do before we just put the lining and the bag together. Turn your bag right side out and I want you to be very mindful now of your own machine. Now I've got a quite strong machine here. Um, it, all of them, the machines that I use are fairly strong so I know they're capable but I want you to be very considerate of your machine of what I'm about to tell you, okay? <laughs> really could do with a good press but anyway, <laughs> what I want you to do is from the top here, let me hold that up a bit better, from the top here down to your pocket, so the top of the pocket, I want you just to fold that edge over and top stitch those edges together. Now let me show you in my original one. I'm going to do it but I want you to see what it looks like. It does make a difference. It kind of gives you, I don't know if you can see, but it kind of gives you a structure here. It gives you a seam. It gives you, a, it kind of folds makes it fold easier um, than leaving it as, as a soft edge. It gives you a boxy edge and it's just a top stitch along there. Now you're only going to do that on the on the back. You're not going to do it on the lining. Let's just pop that there now. Um, but like I said, I want you to be mindful of your machine because you're going through lots of layers. So have a little test of it first. If your machine says, uh-uh, I don't like it, then please don't force it. It's not essential. It's just an a decorative bit so I'm just going to pop it under my machine I've still got my walking foot on which is all right I wouldn't normally do this with a walking foot um, and make sure those seams and you really want to kind of give this a lovely press um, ideally you're going to do this from the front I'm <laughs> doing it from the gusset I've got to kind of guess where my pockets are now which is there so again make sure those seams are lovely and, and sort of straight Let's just have a quick look. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So from the other side, I'm going to do it so I can see what I'm doing this time. I'm going from the top down. So um, I wouldn't say it was a quarter of an inch. It's less than that. But it's just a, a top stitch. Really. It's kind of decorative, as, I, as I've said. Um, but it makes those... Those, that, that part of the gusset more boxy it kind of gives it I don't know if you can see can you see it gives it that sort of structural look there that's better there and you can see what a sharp crease that is so we'll do it from the other side and I'll do it exactly the same as the other side so it, it does look the same so don't forget to press I mean I, I'm going to press this afterwards but you know when I'm demonstrating I just kind of crack on don't forget those magnetic closures might stick on your bed of your machine. <laughs> I'm only laughing because that's happened to me and I'm thinking, what on earth's going wrong with this machine? It keeps stopping, it's dragging. And it's only because the magnetic closure has grabbed the bed of the machine. <laughs> They're such powerful things. So again, push that seam out. You know, as I say, you'll have pressed this and made it beautiful and crispy. You know, I like a crispy finish. If I wasn't happy with it, I'd undo it. I would want it to be right. And I don't know if you've noticed um, on the pattern for Augustina, there's a beautiful young lady modelling this bag and the hat that matches, which is over here. And that's my eldest daughter, Adrienne. So there's the bag now with the poppers in, the pockets done, the holes done, the top stitching down here. So the next thing to do is to actually put the lining in. Now the lining couldn't be simpler. It's the back and the front of the bag with the curves cut off with that template and the gusset put in. And it's exactly the same. Two pieces joined together with that seam going down there. Uh, press yours. A little top tip. If you want your lining to be not quite so baggy inside your bag stitch it a little bit bigger than half an inch so right sides together now guys yeah so um yeah and i've left a turning gap before i forget one of these edges at the top here there it is has a turning gap don't forget that although you can just unpick 
yeah so make your seams just that little bit bigger than half an inch um, and then your lining sits a little bit neater inside your bag um, and it's only a, a millimetre or so so just bring your gusset um, size together now don't forget again where we've done that top stitching just now it's a lot of fabric for your machine to go through be respectful of your machine I don't want you crying because it's gone to the menders you know what it takes about three weeks doesn't it I've had one machine go in and I'm due to pick it up possibly over the next week and it's been there now four months oh but I haven't needed it. <laughs> I've got one or two other machines I can use. I'm lucky. Oh dear. Right. So all I'm doing is pinning or clipping these pieces together where the gusset is. Making that fit beautifully. And then I'm just going to whip around the top of that bag. So just find a place to start. And if you notice, we haven't cut those holes yet. The holes for the grommets. It's a lovely word. Again, half an inch seam allowance, centimetres, fine. And just work your way round. What you might want to do, again, because we're hand cutting, we're not going to cut this by machine, it's all down to human error and human uh, intervention. If you find that you're, um, when you put the two together, pin, 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 pin every couple of inches, because you want to make sure that your lining it's the same size as your bag um, because there's nothing worse than you know stitching all the way around and realizing that your lining is a little bit bigger and because we've done that top stitching we've actually reduced the size of our bag so bear that in mind right so I'm going over those big seams now taking my time even though this is sort of semi-industrial Again, just being respectful of my machine over those gussets and just easing that fabric around because I know my lining is just a wee bit bigger than my bag so I'm just I'm kind of being generous with my lining here I'm pushing it even though I've got my walking foot on <laughs> I'm still trying to keep in control and to be honest I think I should have cut it down but that's all right, nobody's going to tell on me. So, half an inch seam allowance, like I say, all the way around that top, you don't need to turn, um, make a turning gap. There we go. And we're coming back to the start. Over those seams, be respectful. It's the sort of situation where if you go too fast, too quick, through all of those layers, your machine's kind of not expecting it, um, you'll break a needle without a doubt. Okay, so using our turning gap, we're just going to turn this bag through. And we're almost done. We're just going to put our grommets in now. And then I've just got the straps to make. I've made one, so we'll make the other one. Um, and you can see why you need to press well, don't you? Because you're screwing all this up there we go so the reason why I haven't done the holes yet for the lining is because this is the stage where you really 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 need to give this a good press okay so you're going to press this top seam beautifully and then you're going to top stitch it okay and I want you to see if I press that I'm going to finger press it I think I'll go away and press this so it does make a good job and you can see where my lining is through the hole. You can see it there. Now what I'll do is I'll press this, I'll top stitch it round the top edge, and then I'm going to draw through my existing hole onto the lining, cut the lining, and then put the grommet in. But I'm gonna go away and press this first. Okay, so I've top stitched around that edge there now. A little pointer. When you get to those pieces that you've done a top stitch for going down the front of the bag, 
your machine may well struggle with that. So what I want you to do is go up to that seam and just jump over it and start stitching again. That way it, you won't have that struggle going over all that bolt that really is quite thick there, but it still gives it that lovely top stitch finish. So please don't worry about that. So now that's all been stitched and pressed, uh, my lining is lying flat. I'm just going to uh, draw inside my bag. So I'm drawing inside the holes and again. Now you can do this from the inside as well. So if I show you, if I open this up now, you will not be able to see what I'm doing here, okay, unless I've got a light box underneath it. But because of the fabric, I can actually see where the holes should be and I can just roughly sketch around it's kind of you can see a dark shadow where the hole is and I'm just sketching where that hole is so I'm just going to move that again and you might be able to see it look oh, yes you can see it on the overhead shot so look you're just drawing around that dark shadow okay and if I flip the bag over and do the same again so even if you can do it from the front all this way it matters not as long as you get you can get your, your pen in there and sort of draw around and then your scissors to actually cut the hole and because we've stitched the whole bag together I know that's exactly where my lining should be for the grommets uh, if you did it beforehand your holes may well not match up it's just a it's kind of a safety net to do it this way so just get your lovely sharp scissors do the same again pinch the fabric cut into it be brave this is only um, one layer now and again it's a little awkward to go, to go around the circle you're gonna have to keep sort of moving your bag your fabric your hands you're kind of going back on yourself it doesn't have to be super super neat because it's going to go inside that grommet so just come around there we go I'm happy with that again be careful when you cut although you have got a hole underneath um, and follow your the line like I say it's because because you're cutting a complete circle you've got to keep twisting your hand your arm your bag it's it's not easy and don't worry about being it 100% beautiful because that grommet is going to cover a multitude of sins. So again, flip it over. I'll flip it this way this time. Not that it makes any difference. Cut into that fold. Let's do it so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and then just follow, follow your drawn line. All the way around. So every time you'll hear me quite quiet because I'm concentrating, following my line. Unusual. Cut in. It's just twisting, turning, twisting, turning. But it's easier doing this than trying to cut those holes, uh, especially with the, the bag top. It's easier when that hasn't been stitched together. Just follow it around. Like I say, you don't have to be super neat with this. I think with the bag front, you have to be quite careful, but with the lining, you don't really, because it's so thin, it's just going to fit beautifully. So there's our holes made. It's quite frightening because you spend a lot of time making this bag. So the raised edge of your grommet goes from the underneath. You may well do it a different way, but that's how I always do it. I'm just going to twist it around a little bit so it's easier for me. That doesn't make it easier. Normally I'd do it right close to my chest, but I need you to see it. So I'm just lining everything up and just pushing all of that into the grommet. Um, you'll know when it fits. It's a bit like a covered button. It, it, it fits beautifully and then it's tight and it won't come off. Just spend a bit of time working that in, pushing the sides down. There we go. Now I'm happy with that. So now you want the other half, which is, whoops, which is the flat half and that literally clamps over the top so let me get that round again see how that popped out now if that i mean that lining is probably it could do with snipping but i'm going to see how i get on so i've got that lined up i've got the grommet and it just goes over the top and you click it down i might have to stand up for this but you click it down it locks back in place again 
So just give it a push. There we go, that's snapped in place. And there's our grommet installed. I'll sit down again. <laughs> there's our grommet installed, can you see? Looks really neat. Let me show you from the front. Looks really neat. Right, I'm gonna go and do the other three. <laughs> And then I'll come back to you in a minute and we'll do the straps, tie the knots, we're done. Right, got my grommets in. <laughs> they look good, don't they? A little bit of shine as well, a bit, a bit of bling on your bag. Um, so now it's to make the straps. Now I've cut my straps, you'll see in the pattern, it's literally selvage to selvage, five inches. Um, and all I've done is turned over a quarter of an inch. I've ironed a quarter of an inch in each side and at the bottom as well thereabouts. Um, so I'm literally just going to fold that whole lot together. So keeping those sort of ironed folds in place, uh, I'm just bringing the edges together. So we're going to stitch wrong side to wrong side. So we're going to stitch as that strap's going to look. Um, just makes it easier that way. You can do a tube if you want to and turn it through, but I've only used quarter inch seam allowance. So bear that in mind. So just keep that nice and neat. And again, you'll see as I'm stitching, and if you look at the bag here, this is the complete opposite to the one I made. It's just quite fun, really. Um, I bought two meters of fabric and I've made both bags and I've made the hat as well. And just make sure, because we've only done a quarter inch turnover with this um, strap, just make sure that your seam allowance is, you know, your top stitching is less than a quarter of an inch. Only by a little bit. And if you're not too sure, if you've caught those raw edges down, then do another top stitch closer to the edge. Um, that's entirely up to you. Um, see how you go with it. So just coming down to the end now. And to make this look balanced and super neat, I'm just going to go up the other side and then you've got top stitching on both sides of the strap. And if you don't do that, it doesn't look balanced. So that's the only reason. There is no stabilizer in this at all. I wanted it to be a soft, uh, I don't know what, what I'm thinking. I'm thinking handkerchief, I don't know why, but that's what I'm thinking. A nice soft finish. Um, so fast that machine. Oh, I love it. Right, so there is our strap done. The little things in life. There's our strap done. Um, like I say, it's nice and soft, it's squidgy, it's not, uh, hasn't got any sort of structure. The bag has got enough structure, doesn't need the handles to be, unless you want it to be. So all you're doing is popping an end through and tying a knot. Now, um, the, mat, the, biggest, the, the bigger the knot, the less handle you'll have. And it is purely decorative because I've, although I've tied the knot there, that will easily just pull through, okay? So it's purely decorative. So while it's there, while it's sort of sitting proud, let's get a pin because we're just going to top stitch that in place. And you'll go over your top stitching that you've just done. Make sure that strap isn't twisted. Bring it around, tuck it through, do a knot. Just make it about the same as the other one. Just make sure this isn't twisted, which it nearly was. Bring it through to where you feel that it's gonna sit nicely. Maybe the knot's gonna fill the hole, maybe it's gonna dangle down a bit. Um, so it's about the same. I think we're about right there. Put another pin in. Okay, flip it over. It's easy, isn't it? Pop it through, tie a knot. You don't have to do the knot. Can't think what else you could do. Maybe you could put a bow on there or something. Just make it a little different. Put a pin in. Obviously you're gonna top stitch that in place. 
pop it through, tie a knot. Like I say, the, the bigger the knot, the less material you'll have in the handle. So be aware of that. You don't want a right long edge here. I like that. <laughs> right, so just make sure our handles are sitting the right way and they're not twisted. That's it. Get it so it's lying nicely. Um, and make sure that your strap is pinned directly above the grommet, which is a little bit out there. But pin it and have a look at it. Uh, yeah, hold it up like that. Can you see? Yeah, there it is. So look, I'll go and run that under the machine in a second because that's the last of it. Then we're done, we're done. I've popped the poppers together at the sides. I don't know if you can see, they're popped together there. And that is my Augustina bag, which matches this bag. Ooh, two of them. They're so big. Tipped all my clips over. But more importantly, it matches my hat. This is Augie. What do you think? And you could turn the brim up, a bit of sort of Paddington Bear style, or take the brim down and that sunshine then, it's protecting your eyes, the, the shade here. And then you've got one to match this bag. You can hardly see me, but I can turn it the other way. I'm looking in the monitor so I look okay. Now, it suits this bag. <laughs> so that's Augustina. <laughs> I think I like it with the brim up. Okay. I can't get it right. <laughs> so you've got Augustina and Augie. I think they're adorable. So don't forget, go to my website, lizzycurtis.com. You'll find the download there. You'll find lots of inspiration. I just now want to go to the beach and sit in the sunshine. I don't think that's going to happen. Have a lovely rest of your day. I hope you make loads.